catechize your children or the world will do it for you. What's up everybody, Pastor Matt here. I wanna to talk today about the importance of catechizing your children. I was running some numbers today, just doing a thought experiment about how much influence the church has in the lives and hearts of our children versus the influence of the world. So a little thought experiment here. Think about school just for a moment. Suppose you send your children to the public school, and I'm not gonna argue for or against uh, homeschooling or public schooling today, not, not in this video at least. But suppose you sent your kid every day to school, seven hours a day for 18 years. That would be some 22,000 hours of public school uh, lessons on history, on economics, on social values, so social justice, uh, the way the world works, anatomy, physiology, all these things, 22,000 hours. Now compare that to a best case scenario uh, of, ch of church attendance. So let's say that you go to church uh, and you go uh, twice a week for children. Uh, you have the main service, of course. You have Sunday school hours, so there's two hours there. Let's say you go two more hours on Wednesday nights. That's a total of 3,744 hours of Christian education. Best case scenario, every Sunday, every Wednesday night, that's only 16% of what the world is going to do to educate your children. And I guarantee you, when the world ed educates your children, it is not going to be in the law and the gospel. It is not going to be on the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is going to be on the world's values, the world's morals, the world's ethics. Now, let's run another scenario real quick, and that has to do with screen time. Suppose your child spends one hour of screen time every day looking at YouTube, surfing the interwebs, uh, watching movies, whatever it is, just one hour a day. Over the course of a year, that's going to be 6,570 hours but that's only for one hour a day. And if you're honest with yourself, and I think um, I've got to be honest with myself, my kids spend a little bit more than an hour, and I know your do, yours do too. In fact, the actual number of screen hours that our children put in a day if they're teenagers is about seven hours a day. So that's equal to the amount of time that they're in school. So you say, well, 22,000 hours again, right? No, wrong, because that's every single day of the year, 365 days, and school is only 180 days a year. So add up their screen time, their influence, and they're spending some 45,000 hours in front of a screen. Again, being catechized by the world. Uh, every joke on the Nickelodeon show, uh, every pun on the YouTube channel that they watch that you don't know that they watch, um, every episode of some cutting-edge, hip, hilarious, funny show, every speech from the Golden Globes is not going to be the lessons of the Christian church or Christian doctrine or of biblical scriptures. It's going to be the lessons, ethics, beliefs, and practices of the world. Now, how in the world are we going to fight against that? Okay, part of me wants to throw up my hands and simply say, I can't do it, and, and you can't either. Let's just throw in the towel. But the other part of me says, no way, man, I'm not going to surrender the heart and the mind of my children to the unbelieving world. I'm going to do everything I possibly can through prayer, church, and catechism to raise my children in the way and truth of the Lord. And so let me give you three ways that we can fight against the constant drilling and instruction of the world and instead to catechize them in the truths of scripture. Now, if I just use the word catechism and you freaked out because that sounds Roman Catholic, um, no, actually catechism is a very Protestant idea, but that's a whole other YouTube video. But trust me that the Lutherans and the Reformed used catechism even better and more effectively than the Roman Catholic Church did uh, to catechize and to raise Protestants. And that's one of the reasons why the Protestant movement was so powerful. So we have things like the Westminster Shorter Catechism or the Heidelberg Catechism to use to raise our children in the Lord. So that's going to be one thing. I would highly suggest that if you are not doing so already, that you find a catechism that suits your beliefs and you immediately begin training your children in that catechism a little bit at a time. There's Westminster, there's Heidelberg, as I said, uh, there's other catechisms, there's Baptist catechisms that are, si that are similar to the Westminster, uh, but reformed slightly for Baptist convictions. There's the New City Catechism, 
you pick one that works well for you and begin using it in sort of a systematic way. Now, just one word of encouragement here. Um, I taught my children an entire catechetical system just by driving them to school when they were in elementary school. Uh, we used to have a little driving route where we'd drive to the school and we'd have to do this whole parking lot shenanigan where we had to wait for everybody to drop off their kids and get their backpacks on and all this. And I used that time every single day to drill two or three questions from the catechism. And by the time my children were through fifth grade, we'd had them memorize the whole children's catechism. So there, how about that? It's not impossible. You can do this and you ought to do it. And number two, there ought to be simply deep readings of scripture. Um, catechism, catechism in form for doctrine, but deep readings of scripture. Best way to do that is simply to read scripture before your meals. You have a meal every day. I know you do. You probably have three. Hopefully you're eating those meals with and beside your family. And when you do, simply get out your Bible before or after and read a chapter or two, and you will be surprised how much depth you can cover in the scriptures with your children. Final thing I'll say by way of uh, encouragement and influence is that you would simply discuss the sermon after church on the Lord's Day. Uh, take your notes outline the sermon and just go over it with your family. Ask each kid, beginning with the smallest child, what he or she heard in the sermon and go more advanced as the kids grow in their understanding and maturity all the way up. Uh, talk to your wife about what she learned and then give your thoughts on the sermon as well. You do th those three things, catechism, deep readings of scripture and discussion on the sermons, and you will be able to counteract much of the world's deadly catechetical influence into the hearts and minds of our children. If you need some resources to help you out with that, I did write a book called At the Table. Actually, there's two different versions of At the Table. Simple Family Table Devotions begins with a prayer, uh, reading of a scripture passage, works through the Westminster Shorty, Shorter Catechism, and it has place to take prayer requests and sermon notes. I'll post a link to that in the description of this video. Thanks for checking in. Feel free to comment. If you liked the video, hit like. If you didn't like it, hit thumbs down twice or four times or six. Uh, thanks for checking in. See ya.